You're watching NASA TV. Good morning from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston and Mission Control. As we begin our coverage today of U.S. Spacewalk 82, you are looking live inside the equipment lock of the Quest airlock of the International Space Station as uh, the two astronauts who will venture outside the Quest airlock a short time from now, Josh Cassida, who is on the right side of your screen, wearing the suit, bearing the red stripes, and just hidden from the field of view, Frank Rubio, who's on the left side, being attended to by Koichi Wakata from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. There you see Rubio on the left. Those are our two astronauts for today who will venture outside for a spacewalk expected to last about seven hours, the uh, focus of which will be on the starboard fortress of the International Space Station to install and monitor the deployment of one of the IROSAs, the ISS Rollout Solar Arrays, one of two that were delivered on a SpaceX Cargo Dragon resupply craft last Sunday to the International out then down to vacuum uh, prior to the time the crew had placed their suits on battery power to mark the official start of today's spacewalk, a U.S.-based spacewalk out of the Quest airlock. Its elapsed time is measured from battery power on for the crew as on the their EVA space begins, suits. Josh Cassida as EV-1 in the red stripes will egress the airlock first, followed by EV-2, Frank Rubio, with the white stripes. They will each grab a bag, and then both crew members will translate out to a location on the truss to set up their tethers. EV-1 will head to the IROSA carrier that has the stowed solar arrays to begin setting up that worksite by stowing his crew lock bag on a handrail and retrieving his pistol grip tool. EV-1 will then release the first restraint bolt on the IROSA. Meanwhile, EV-2 will head outboard to drop off their cable bag, then retrieve and stow their crew lock bag at the 3A IROSA mod kit. Back at the IROSA carrier, EV-1 will retrieve an articulating portable foot restraint and install it on the end of the space station's robotic arm. EV-1 ingresses that foot restraint, providing a stable platform to allow the IROSA to be carried from the carrier out to the mod kit installation location. Once complete at the mod kit, EV-2 translates inboard and begins preparing the IROSA for removal from the carrier. First, EV-2 will release two anti-rotation devices from the carrier. These devices secure the primary restraint bolts during the high vibration load seen during launch. EV-2 will then partially release the primary restraint bolts and install the first of two handling aids, called scoops, in preparation for removing the IROSA from the carrier. On the robotic arm, EV-1 will fly over to access two sets of bolts on the boom end of the IROSA. The first two bolts will allow the boom deployment system rollers to be moved into place, later helping the arrays during deployment. The second two bolts will release two of four mechanisms holding the IROSA in its rolled-up configuration. The robotic arm will then fly EV-1 over to the other side of the IROSA and both crew members will work together to release the final bolt holding IROSA to the carrier. They will then install a second scoop and then lift IROSA off of the carrier. After several maneuvers on the robotic arm, EV-1 will arrive at the mod kit worksite. During these maneuvers, EV-2 will reconfigure EV-1's safety tether and meet EV-1 out at the mod kit. Both crew will work together to install the IROSA onto the mounting bracket. The 
Crew will remove the scoops, and EV-1 will move into position to release the final bolt, holding the IROSA in its folded position. Once released, EV-2 will hold IROSA closed while EV-1 egresses the foot restraint and gets into position. Both crew will then work together to unfold IROSA and secure the right side onto the mounting bracket. Once secure, EV-1 will drive two hinge bolts that hold the IROSA in the unfolded position and move away from the IROSA to reconfigure their safety tethers. EV-2 will then drive eight bolts to fully secure the IROSA to the mounting bracket. Both crew will then work to electrically connect the new IROSA to the ISS power system. They'll first attach four connectors to IROSA, then move to either side of the legacy array to disconnect the old array and connect a Y cable that allows power to flow from both the new IROSA and the legacy array. At this point, EV-2 will move to a deployment viewing position, and EV-1 will release the final two bolts restraining IROSA in the undeployed position. IROSA will deploy over the next 6 to 10 minutes, and once complete, EV-1 will release two bolts that allow the IROSA blankets to become tensioned. EV-1 will translate back to the IROSA carrier and begin work on releasing the carrier beams that previously held the IROSA. These beams need to be rotated out of the way to allow access to the lower IROSA on the second EVA. Clean up the mod kit worksite, retrieve a crew lock bag, and head to the carrier to help EV-1 with the carrier beams. The crew members will work together to release the bolts holding the beams in place, then rotate the beams out of the way and secure them back down. This is the last task in the first EVA, and both crew will clean up their worksite and translate back to the airlock to clean up their tethers, ingress, and begin repressing the airlock. Okay, with your go, I'll start with the fan off and then power it to you. This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, spacewalk underway officially with the uh, switch of the two crew members' suits to battery power at 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. Josh Cassida lost uh, the display on his uh, display and control monitor, uh, which shows him uh, basic uh, suit parameters. So he's in the process of restarting that. Uh, this is a common occurrence, no issue, no impact to the spacewalk. So we're underway, 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. Josh Cassida now outside of the uh, Quest airlock. He is EV-1 or extravehicular crew member number one, wearing the suit uh, bearing the red stripes. Frank Rubio will wear the unmarked suit, both uh, crew members embarking on the second spacewalk of their careers. Black on black, moving over to port on 554 for Frank. Copy, Josh. Gate closed, side of lock for your anchor. You'll just want to check your reels are unlocked at, at some point. We can get that in the buddy checks. You're looking to put Frank's anchor hook on that port stanchion of 554. 
Copy that. In work, and both reels are unlocked. Space Station. Rubio will be using a pistol grip tool to uh, unbolt the first of uh, a number of bolts that are available uh, holding uh, the IROSA in place. The release of uh, the first of these bolts plus the release of what are called anti-rotation devices that were designed uh, to minimize uh, the loads on the solar arrays in the trunk of the SpaceX Cargo Dragon carrier craft that resupply of northeast across the Pacific, soon to cross uh, the west coast of South America. The International Space Station flies smoothly on 53 minutes into today's spacewalk by Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio, running about 15 minutes ahead of the timeline so far, having begun the spacewalk at 6.16 a.m. Central Time, 7.16 a.m. Eastern Time. and prepare it uh, for its ultimate uh, unfurling. Okay, we are at the published position. Understood, stand by. Okay, I think that's gonna work. Let's call it QCA complete, and I'll let you know if I need anything else. While Cassidy is uh, in the process of uh, retrieving and installing the articulating portable foot restraint at the end of the robotic arm, Frank Rubio will begin to release the anti-rotation devices. Again, these are devices that uh, prevented any inadvertent motion by the delicate uh, ISS rollout solar arrays while they were in the trunk of the cargo dragon. The red stripe, Josh Cassida, with the uh, articulating portable foot restraint that he will attach uh, to the end of the station's robotic arm that soon will be operated by Koichi Wakata with the assistance of Nicole Mann from the robotic workstation inside the Destiny Lab. EV-1, and we have a GCA to publish APFR ingress position when you're ready. Copy that. In the uh, maybe five minutes or so, we'll do a tether swap here. Good view of Josh Cassida at the end of the uh, Canadarm2 robotic arm in a uh, foot restraint, positioning him at the right uh, orientation. He will be uh, rotating a couple of uh, rollers called Boom Deployment System rollers 90 degrees to a deployed position. Part of the work uh, in tandem with Frank Rubio. Uh, ran here, it snapped while I was trying to pull it out. Copy, Frank. CV1, we're setting up for GCA, GCA to publish R1, R2 bolt access. To publish for R1, R2 access. Okay, we are ready. This will bring you body in about a meter and a half. Copy, body in a meter and a half. Okay. Uh, I'm going to head over to Delta real quick and give Josh the... Uh, System, uh, APFR, Josh, I see your right. You know what, uh, M1, do you mind if we took a minute and just move the uh, body down? Okay, that's good. Okay. All right. Now pull, there we go. Okay. And the ISS rollout solar array, the third in the series of uh, Upgraded uh, augmenting arrays for the station is free from its flight support structure. All right, Frank. You've got the comm for the Robo. Okay. And uh, Duke, you have a go for GCA to published fibrosa removal. Okay, this is going to bring EV1 body down four meters. Copy. Starting motion. I should have about. Three inches of clearance from the gravel fixture. Okay. I see motion. Good motion. We clear the gravel fixture in about 10 inches. Okay. Are you putting any force into that, Rissa? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to just uh, keep it slightly away from...
So I'm about two inches clear. Okay. V1 copies, and I'm ready. Three, two, one, starting motion. Of course, I see good motion. And Frank, Nick, back back with you. Um, got a caution here about the red hook location. It's going to be near an IEA radiator, so just be aware of that. The handrail you're looking for is 2217. I'm there. Copy. Yep, copy that, Frank. Uh, you've got the doors closed. We'd like the doors facing the tower, and if you can cinch those straps as best you can that are holding it in place from, that's perfect. Ground's happy, Frank. Okay, great. Flying toward the uh, west coast of South America, Josh Cassida, holding the ISS rollout solar array, being maneuvered toward the uh, starboard four truss worksite for its installation to augment uh, power capability for the 3A power channel on the International Space Station. Okay, Nick, I have Josh's red hook on my red reel. Reel is unlocked and his hook is unlocked. Okay, Frank, we copy that. Check your gauntlets down, and then you're heading out to the S4 IEA, and you're going to be stowing the red hook near the radiator. And Josh, we chatted over it. If you if you got good clearance, uh, we're good to press with the uh, the the GCA for the uh, published install. Simultaneously, that's translation unfolding bolt tops connectors. Uh, so don't move simultaneously. Sudden stops and quick grabs are not allowed on the mod kit. So translate slow and 30 pounds max lateral force on the mod kit uh, during and after IROSA soft capture. You want to copy? Me too, copy. Don't, don't, don't push it. Don't, don't, got it. Yeah, I don't see their soft capture features up, so they should not be the ones blocking it. They're about 20 centimeters. Translate towards you. Correct. Watch your hand. Um, I'm going to do the pitch. Let's see. My roll for our frame of reference. Okay. I'm going to roll it. Your end. Hurt you. Have a butt. Seem to want to go. 
I mean, sorry, check the uh, soft cast for features. I can see they're the same, and they are cocked and locked. Okay. Like they have not triggered. Put out of my eyes. Yeah. At the three-hour mark, the IROSA is now uh, engaged and uh, mounted on the mounting bracket on the modification kit on the starboard four truss. A little elbow grease required, but nonetheless, IROSA is on its mounting bracket on the S4 truss. A couple second breather here after uh, the release of final hinge restraint bolts that will enable the IROSA to unfold like a flip phone to its. Uh, pre-deployment uh, orientation. Nicely done, Frank. I cannot wait to hear what it was. It was just the uh, the outside soft capture one just wasn't, uh, so I just pulled it all the way down and then it slid right in. Awesome. I see, it just wasn't sliding past the no, soft capture wasn't so soft. <laughs> Not quite soft enough. Once uh, the array is folded. All right. And the soft capture is armed. Okay, R7, R8. I am, I am here and understand we're going to drive this clockwise. All right. On hand tight on R7. Copy, that's going to be less than one turn, less than 30 inch pounds. Does not want to come off. Right. But I recommend that back shell thing that Nick was talking about. Yeah. I'm pushing it. Yeah, Frank, if you hold the cap in one hand and the uh, back shell, the metal part of the back shell in the other, and just try to separate them, it should move the lever by, by itself. Ah, nice. Wow. Uh, rollout solar array that has uh, been installed on the starboard four truss of the International Space Station. Now four hours, 22 minutes into today's spacewalk by Josh Cassida and Frank Rubio. The display is not in front of me, but I saw 22 as the program. Yes, that sounds right. And... P9 Alpha is mated to P9. Copy. P9 mated to the panel, or Alpha to the panel, and you got a good hard stop. And applause here in Mission Control. The rollout solar ray begins to unfurl. <laughs> this will take uh, a little under 10 minutes uh, to reach its full length of 60 feet. That is incredible. That's pretty cool. Oh. Amazing job from the engineers who came up with this idea to the ones who put together the plan. This is remarkable. The uh, ISS rollout solar array began to unfurl at uh, 11.37 a.m. Central Time at the five-hour, 
21 minute mark into today's spacewalk. And that could be the first set of magnets are all equipped together. Yeah, copy, Frank. And uh, if you could uh, roll a little bit to your right, we would uh, might help us see it on your HECA. Great view. Appreciate the effort. Yep. This array, when fully deployed uh, to its length of 60 feet, uh, will shadow about half of the original array on the starboard four truss, providing an additional 20 kilowatts or so of electrical capability for the space station. That's great to hear, Frank. Thanks for the words. This is Mission Control Houston, the uh, new ISS rollout solar array doing just what its name implies, rolling out to its full length of 60 feet that uh, began about five minutes ago. I know that uh, I'm really speechless, but this will do it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's a pretty uh, amazing view to backdrop the, the dudes, you know?
and Josh Frank. We've got a, a few minutes here as it finishes the deployment, and then we uh, tighten everything back up and start cleaning up. Wanted to give you some big picture words and then figure out, uh, get some input from you on the way forward because we do have a little bit of time before the next eclipse where we're going to go after that one Bravo. Okay. Yeah, so big picture, consumables are looking great, timelines looking great, uh, you know, so we're not facing any limits there. Um, we've been scratching our heads on the, the things that Josh might be able to do while, Frank, while you're out working the, the one Bravo. Um, so that would involve going back to the FSC um, and releasing bolts one through four, R1 through R4. And, uh, and no need to do any kind of socket swap or anything. We'd have you drop a crew lock bag off on uh, the seated cart on your way. Just getting them positioned out at one Bravo. I just want to check and see how you guys are feeling. If you're good with that plan, uh, ground's here to support. So you're broken, but I understand the question is, are we comfortable with me being at the FFC, uh doing R1 through R4 on the lower I while Frank is uh, working six? Yep, copy. We've got some comm interference. You were a little broken, but, yeah, that's the question. Are you guys good with the split? I'm, I'm okay with it. Nick, how long of a transition is if, uh, if we need to do it quickly? Seems like it would be 10, 15? Probably 10? Yeah, we think 5 to 10. 5 to 10. Go ahead and just talk through the route that I would take to get out to you. So we've already thought through it, there's no questions. And I would be, uh, I'd be comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah, and we'll just stay in constant calm, and I'll, and I'll let you know everything's going well the whole time. Okay. Well, Nick, I think I can picture a lot of the handrails. For me to get out there, uh, obviously from the FSE going under the MT, going under the starboard seat of cart, uh, going across the Sarge, could I stay stationed forward, or would I? Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah, that would work. And it, I don't know if you have it up in front of you, but would it be the same same path I took before? I know we've changed the configuration of the station. Um, I think there were handrails like uh, 2222, now that I was going the right way after crossing the search. And Josh, we're tracked, we're, we're talking it. If you can be, uh, haven't looked at it on the computer, and then uh, we haven't been out there once, but that's not the route I went. Yep, and if I had to come to you, I would just follow my others, swap, and then head over to the seat of I agree. Okay, Nick, if we end up going that route, uh, EB1 and EB2 are game. The uh, new ISS rollout solar array now fully deployed to its length of 60 feet. The uh, deployment took about nine minutes to complete. The uh, deployment uh, or the unfurling of the array began at 11.37 a.m. Central Time and was complete about two minutes ago. Two uh, bolts uh, now will be driven uh, to tension the array, and then all of the uh, IROSA work will be complete. And guys, just want to let you know we're seeing uh, good power off IROSA, so it's up and working. Nice. Awesome news. Awesome. Holy cow. And my TTV setting is now four. And Josh, for your essay, it's a temp stow because we're taking it back in the airlock. Okay. Okay, copy that. And those handrails again were... It's 
2006. Okay, I'm there. Cassida and Rubio replicating the work they did today during the next spacewalk that they will conduct on December 19th. Meanwhile, we're just under 20 minutes away from moving into an orbital sunset, into eclipse as it is called, at which point uh, Frank Rubio Josh Cassida moving uh, the uh, boom deployment uh, mechanisms into the correct rotational position after uh, releasing four. Copy, Josh. And Frank, uh, looks like you might be a little inboard of your green hook. Yep. Saw that. Heading back in. I'm going to take it off my CRT, but it's still red into my CRT red. <laughs> 